Civilization is one of the greatest game series I have ever played, and like all megalomaniacs that have played the game, world domination is the ultimate goal. I've always wanted to turn the map one color, so I picked Egypt. Um, I looked for the biggest earth map that I could find, 22 civilizations, 28 city-states, and I set about world domination. This journey took an incredible amount of time to make happen, but at the end of the video, I'll show you why world domination might be the answer to world peace in the real world. We'll zoom into the map at the bottom corner to watch it turn yellow. We start off in the year 4000 BCE with my capital city, Thebes, and the first sieve that I run into is Russia, and I'm like, Russia, man, get some furniture in here. I don't know, anything will do, like a couch over there, a sick 55-inch TV, a jukebox, Anything will do, man, seriously. Then 840 years later, she asked me to be friends. 840 years. I've heard of playing hard to get, but that's just ridiculous. Next up is Germany, and he's like a hoarder compared to Russia. He's got one desk in this whole massive room. He doesn't even have a chair to sit on. At least Rome had a chair when I met him next, but to be honest, that chair was a little creepy. By 1760 BCE, I founded my next city, Memphis, and at this stage, it seems like my civilization had started off in the beautiful desert lands of North Africa. Then I met King Feline the Third, and he was like, give me all your foods. And so I did, and I never saw him again. I ran into Gandhi, and then my friendly neighbour Germany knocked on my door to see if he could borrow some sugar. I said I didn't have any. USA then showed up, and then Russia wanted to be friends. Again. I thought we already were friends, Russia. What gives? But as soon as I was friendly with Russia, these two guys show up, and they said they're going to be friends with Russia too. I'm like, get your own, Russia guys. She's taken. Then over the years, I ran into the Aztecs, Siam, China, and then Germany showed up at my door. Again. Asking for whales this time? Nah, bro, I told you I don't have any whales. Why didn't you try Russia next door? Maybe they've got some. <coughs> Tilikum, I told you to shut the f*** up! After Germany went off to find whales someplace else, I ran into Persia and England, but then finally the inevitable happened. War. And it was with China of all people. What happened to you, China? You used to be cool. My strategy had been to not get involved in any conflicts, but I had to protect myself, so I went full President Bush on them. While at war with China, I bumped into France and Greece. But get this, Rome comes up to me and is like, Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet me. Um, hello, Rome. We met like ages ago. How can you not remember me? What are you in? Denial. Get it? Because I'm Egypt and the Nile. <laughs> anyway, up next I meet the Ottomans and the Iroquois, and then Gandhi pulls this shit out of nowhere. Let me just read this out loud. Gandhi says, and I quote, Gandhi is a threat to the stability of this world. The time has come to deal with them once and for all. Gandhi hates Gandhi. Gandhi, don't be so harsh on yourself, man. Come on. You're a pretty cool guy. Don't go to war with yourself. It's stupid. You're going to achieve heaps of great things, you know? I don't know. They're going to they're going to make a movie about you. Ben Kingsley will play you. That's a pretty big achievement for you. That's a pretty big thing. He wins an Oscar. Gandhi, Oscar winner. That's a pretty big achievement for you, man. If you go to war, I don't think you're going to get that Oscar. I left Gandhi to ponder what he had asked of me and finished my war with China. They were the first of many civilizations to fall. Sorry China, please don't get angry with me, it's just a game. Unfortunately, all the other civs don't like it when you destroy someone. Look at all those grumpy faces. Luckily, I ran into Arabia here and they had no idea how much of an arsehole I'd been and they wanted to be friends. High five Arabia! Are you going to stay seated? Okay, yep, stay seated. That's, that's cool. That's cool. We'll do it later. After defeating China, everyone kind of left me alone to amass an army and start a global war just after the year 2050. And ironically, I started that process with India. From here on out, I pretty much just conquer city after city without much resistance at all. It was actually quite a strange game of civilization because I had little to no resistance or trouble, so I was free to build my army up and go nuts on the planet. First I went north through Europe, then east through Asia, and south through Africa. Having set up a small colony in New Zealand, I spread up through Australia and continued my march across Asia, finally crossing into North America and spreading like a virus southward. Look at all these sad sieves as I crush their dreams of world domination. It's heartbreaking. And in the end, just the city of Istanbul remained. But this is where I got weird. I didn't want the game to end there. I wanted complete world domination. So I kept the Ottomans alive so I could make every inch of the map yellow. And so I went about building my empire, even larger than before. Until I realised that would never happen because of these stupid assholes locked away in Antarctica. By ice. You stupid barbarians ruining my dreams. 
So I finished it there, invading Istanbul and winning the game. For those of you who want to see it all in time lapse, here you go. Look how beautiful that is. Sadly, you can't film the huge maps in full and watch it grow that way, but this is what the world looks like when it is dominated by one civilization. Now, I said at the beginning of the video that world domination might be the secret to world peace and world happiness. And if you look at the top left hand corner of the screen there at the happiness bar, look how huge that is. For me, that's pretty big. Maybe world domination is the answer to world peace. Just, just putting it out there. Thank you so much for watching. That's the end of Civilization 5. It's over. It's time to say goodbye because Civilization 6 is here. It's very sad, but I'd just like to say thank you to Civilization 5. What? A grown man saying thank you to a video game? That's crazy. And yes, it is crazy. Um, but it was such a great game and I spent many hours wasting my life playing that video game. But uh, thank you very much for the good times and the good memories. But it's time to move on to bigger, better and newer things. Um, but first I'll just do one more turn. That was like over 80 hours of gameplay summed up in five minutes. Life wasted.